a, it's a booming industry, so there are more and more solutions uh, in the market. If we uh, look at the parametric insurance space, initially, uh, most covers were more around earthquake or cyclone. And today, uh, in the USA, in Europe, in Asia, uh, there are more and more products to be able to cover floods, for instance, bushfires in Australia. It could be, uh, of course, cyclones and, uh, and quakes in, uh, in APAC, but also uh, high storms. This is something that is becoming more and more popular through an insurance, uh, parametric insurance format. So I would say the, 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 the number of options for uh, brokers and for uh, the end clients are increasing every day. Parametric insurance, if we look at Southeast Asia, is a relatively new line of business. Um, but certainly we're seeing a lot of demand start to increase around peak perils, as Songi mentioned, in terms of earthquake, typhoon, cyclone, and also those secondary perils, which are now becoming more of a primary concern for a lot of clients. I think when we all think about parametric insurance, they have, of course, affordability in mind. So we're able to uh, get rid of the loss uh, adjustment fees. Uh, it could be quite significant, uh, sometimes 4, 5, 10% of, uh, of the premium. Uh, it's all about uh, a swift claim uh, payment. So uh, in many geographies, it could take uh, one year or two years to get uh, uh, a payment between the declaration of loss and the claim payment. In our case, it's more a few working days, so it's a big improvement. Transparency is also a big topic. Uh, we, we try to promote very uh, uh, short and concise uh, and transparent wordings. That makes a big difference uh, in the market. And I think most of our products are also bespoke. It is something that uh, uh, sets us apart compared to uh, the more traditional products. And I suppose the other big issue, with it, especially with the, the clients here and the insureds here, are about sustainability of pricing and, and the capacity within the region. So, you know, the fact that we can, we can offer these products for a longer term um, and, and, you know, everything else is stable around that, um, it, it um, eliminates the volatility and the and this uncertainty faced by the, you know, the usual insurance cycle that uh, is usually with the traditional markets as well. So there are many new products where we're trying to innovate in the face of climate change. Uh, I would say it, it really depends on the geography. So in the USA, for example, we are pushing a tornado product. It's very successful, so it should be a, a blockbuster in 2023. In Europe, for example, we are pushing a low river height products. There was a major drought in, in Europe, so for uh, hydropower facilities or also for transportation on, on some key uh, rivers, it, it makes a, a big difference. In Asia, uh, Australia, of course, it's bushfire, I would say, one of the, the, the blockbusters uh, uh, for many reasons and probably flood. In some other countries, I will uh, let uh, Rob comment, typically in Southeast Asia. Yeah, sure. So I guess across Southeast Asia, obviously flood has been the, the key concern. We're hearing that from a lot of people at this conference. In addition to that, I think there are some interesting emerging areas. Renewable energy is quite a key one. There's a lot of talk about new renewable energy projects. And I think where parametric insurance has those non-damaged business interruption um, covers, such as lack of wind for new wind farms, lack of water resource for hydroelectric power plants, we're starting to see increased demand in those areas as new products that can really add value in this market. Uh, I guess uh, issues that um, the industry faces is of course inflation and uh, tackling sort of supply chain issues. And that's where the, the non-damaged business interruption products that we offer, um, uh, it offers a nice solution to cover those that couldn't be covered otherwise by the traditional products. Um, for example, in the construction industry where, where you know, people just face delays and uh, supply chain issues and of course uh, inflation in in, uh, input prices. And that's where we, we can plug in that gap um, where uh, I suppose the demand is there as well.